Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the Baker Act and whether or not you can get Baker Acted for intoxication, uh, specifically alcohol. Um, I had a call, uh, was it yesterday, about um, from, a, from a set of parents, their son, I guess, had been in college uh, or was in college and, you know, like many a college student, uh, and there by the grace of God go I, uh, had a little too much to drink Apparently, he was found wandering in the streets by law enforcement. Um, I guess he became a little combative or resistant. Uh, they tried to get him to a place of safety, and he wouldn't he wouldn't comply. And so they Baker acted him. And um, the parents were calling because, well, he had health insurance. And once the Baker Act facility got a hold of him, uh, you know, as is typical, they didn't want to let him go. Why would they? They've got health. He's got health insurance, and this is how they make money. And I said, look, um, I, I don't think this is legal. In fact, the Baker Act specifically excludes substance use, um, things like alcohol. But here's the deal, uh, and as I've told you in another video, it only takes a finger and someone to point it and you get Baker Acted. And um, that's what's happened here. And because nobody knows he's even there, well, I mean, who are you gonna complain to? The facility doesn't care, and you can't sue them for this, so they really don't care. And, um, the bottom line here is that we're going to have to go to court. I mean, unless they, unless you can tell me they're going to release him, in which case, you know, you don't need me or don't even need, don't need any lawyer because he's getting out. But unless there's some indication, and by all accounts, uh, the facility was telling the, the parents, well, he's very depressed, he needs medication, uh, we need to keep him here for observation, all kinds of ridiculous stuff. Um, the, I mean, unless the, they are indicating that they, they're going to let him go, I mean, we're going to need to fight to get him out, and we should do it relatively quickly because I mean, you know that the facilities will file to keep somebody. And even if they don't intend to keep them, it buys them up to another five days. And I said to the family, you're gonna have to fight to get them out. I mean, it doesn't sound like you're going to let them go. I mean, they're medicating him for depression. I mean, you know, I mean, if we're gonna Baker Act every person that's ever been intoxicated, we'd probably, probably Baker Act in most of the country. I mean, like I said, there by the grace of God go I when I was in college. Um, and so, I mean, that's the bottom line here. It's not legal but you can't sue them for this. Nobody knows you're there. And if they're not gonna let your loved one go, then you're gonna have to fight to get them out. Or they will circle the wagons and build a case to keep them. And if you don't you know, think that's possible, I promise you it is. And I've seen it happen. And I've seen families wait to take action and then call me after the fact, after a judge has already entered an order. And while we can sort of unring that bell, it's much harder to do it after a judge has entered a court order, detaining somebody for an extended period of time, potentially up to six months. So I wanted to share that with you. I appreciate you um, once again tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.